In this following tutorial, I'm going to cover how to create a scavenge game mode for Left 4 Dead 2. And uh, these are the entities we're going to cover and then you're going to need to set up a successful scavenge game mode. Four info survival positions, an info game event proxy, uh, you're going to need a safe start area for the uh, survivor start uh, info director, uh, two point templates, three logic relays, uh, weapons and items, uh, then 16 gas cans around the map, a uh, function nav blocker, a function nav attribute region, and an info game mode. So let's begin. Here I have a basic scene set up with no scavenge based entities in here. And uh, we're going to use this as a base to create uh, the scavenge game tutorial. Right in here I'm going to set up my generator. So let's begin with putting a generator right inside that map. Uh, there are two ways you can uh, insert the generator in, into your map. One is to use a function instance and it's, a, it's an entity that references a file from another folder into your map. So by putting it here we can go into VMF file name, click on the browse, navigate into the instance folder and here you have all the instances you can use into your map. Scavenge generator here at the end. But what I'm going to do, uh, I'm not going to use an instance, but what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to open up the scavenge generator. So you can open the instance files. Uh, all the instance files are uh, just regular VMF files. So I'm going to open this up, and instead of uh, using an instance, I'm going to copy and paste the entire generator in here. So here I have all the elements selected. I'm going to go to Edit, Copy, close this off, and I'm going to just paste it into my map. And then uh, once I have all these selected, I'm just going to click Control G to group them. So I can easily select all of them and just position them. Now this is just a matter of preference. Again, you can use a function instance. It's completely up to you. So I'm just going to position this onto the ground. Here we have our generator. And now let's begin setting up all the elements that uh, we need to set up a scavenger game mode. So now let's insert a info game event proxy entity. So click on your entity tool and under objects for your entities tap in info game event proxy and just uh, put it right next to the generator. Just raise it up a little bit up above and go inside this properties and we're going to set up a few things. First we need the name and the names could be anything you want uh, but for easier to follow along this tutorial uh, just follow you know, input the names that I input. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to troubleshoot. So the name I'm going to give it is event underscore scavenge underscore start area. And under name of the event to generate, it's going to be explain underscore scavenge underscore leave underscore area. And range I'm going to give it 600. And the flags, I'm going to check fire automatically when foreseen. Next, we're going to create a safe starting area. So we're going to use four brushes and we're going to surround our generator around it. So I'm going to go into the top view, choose my brush, and under the texture, I want the texture to be scavenge, and we need this effects scavenge boundary. So I'm going to choose that, and I'm just going to surround this beginning starting area with four brushes. I'm going to make them about uh, about 44 units tall so that that's good for one brush so I'm gonna click enter and before we uh, duplicate all these brushes I just scale them up so here I have one side of my brush and for for the outer and for the inner I'm gonna apply the same texture and for the rest of the sides I'm gonna apply a no draw texture so the sides that uh, the, the narrow sides along here and on the bottom. So here here I have one of my brushes and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this I'm going to duplicate it on one side here I'm going to duplicate it again, rotate it, place it here and place it on the other side. So here I have four brushes with the scavenge boundary texture applied to both sides. Now I need to select them and then uh, having all four selected, I'm going to press Control T and I need to time to an entity. And this entity is just a, a basic function brush. 
So once you have your function brush created out of the four brushes, uh, we need to name it. And the name of this is going to be brush underscore scavenge underscore boundary. Uh, next we need to have a brush surrounding the entire area of uh, our starting area. And that is going to be our function nav attribute region. So we need to create another brush and for this I'm going to apply a texture of trigger. So I'm going to go into the top view and I'm going to make sure that I surround my uh, boundaries with this brush. And I'm just going to take this and I'm going to extend it up. High enough so when the players are inside that it's big enough. So I'm going to press enter. So here we have our trigger brush and it's surrounding everything else inside here. So now we need to take this brush and we need to tie it into an entity. So press Control T and we need to tie it to a function underscore nav attribute region. Apply and we need to assign the name. And the name is nav at underscore scavenge underscore checkpoint. Apply and under flags we need to make sure that it's checked on checkpoint and nothing else. So we have our generator, we have our info game event proxy, we have our boundary area and we have our safe starting zone. We also need to create a couple of brushes that uh, get ri gets rid of navigation uh, underneath the generator. Uh, we don't want to do that uh, with our uh, navigation as we edit in our navigation inside the game but we want to tell uh, these brushes to kill any navigation underneath it. So I'm just going to create a couple more brushes with the same trigger texture and I'm just going to position them right where the generator is touching the ground. So one here. I'm going to press enter. So I have one position here and I'm just going to take this, duplicate it and make it a little bit larger and extend it over so just kind of go over where the generator is. So on, right underneath here, you'll tell the navigation not to uh, have any navigation. We're going to tell it to block the navigation underneath this generator. So having both of these selected, press Control T. Function Nav Blocker. And then we're going to we need to give it a name. And I'm going to name my Nav Block underscore Scavenge. Okay. So now we need to insert a uh, four info survivor positions inside. So going under entity, choosing survivor positions, and I'm going to put one, two, three, four. So I'm going to select all four, and having all four selected, I'm going to go into properties, and I need to change a few things for all four of them. So under name, I'm going to name scavenge underscore positions, and under game mode, I'm going to type in scavenge. And now, for each individual one, I'm going to assign which uh, player gets spawned there. So for each of the survivors, under survivor name, I need to type in Nick. This one is going to be Coach, Ellis, and the last one is Rochelle. So now we're going to place a few items and weapons into the scene. So instead of repeating the same thing um, that I did in the survival tutorial I'm just gonna go and open up the survival tutorial map that I did and uh, I'm just gonna grab these weapons and I'm just gonna copy and paste them and then change a few properties so to save a lot of time uh, it's always good to have a file that you have uh, weapons and items placed out so you can just go copy and paste them uh, you know when you are repeating the same function over and over again uh, it's good to have something you can go into and just uh, copy and paste so to save a lot of time. So I'm just going to grab these items, copy, close this off, and then I'm going to just paste them inside the map. So right here I have my items, I'm just going to place them right on the floor. So now we just need to change a few things. First we need to change the names. Uh, so when it says survival items, under name, uh, we need to name them scavenge underscore items and making sure that under flags it says spawned items must exist and we need to go through and for each one of these we need to name 
scavenge weapons or scavenge items depending on the items and then under flags making sure that must exist is checked on same for the ammo scavenge items making sure must exist checked on good and for our weapon scavenge underscore weapons now we have our item spawn scavenge items just going through double checking scavenge weapons good for our ammo scavenge items yes and for our rifle we have scavenge weapons must exist good